Good afternoon and welcome to our Behaviour Matters webinars. Just before we start, I'd just like to go through a little bit of the, the housekeeping. First of all, um, if you have any questions as we go through, please put them into the Q&A box and I'll try to answer as many as I can at the end of the webinar. Um, there will be a, an opportunity to interact as we go through using the chat function. Um, so uh, I'll let you know when we would like you to use the chat. Um, one question that always gets asked is, will a recording be available? And yes, it will be sent out um, within the next 48 hours. So welcome to work-life balance in a hybrid world. You can see quite a few uh, people that I, I know and have been to previous webinars online with us today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle MacArthur Morgan, and I am the founding partner at Jigsaw Discovery and creator, or one of the creators, of the Jigsaw Discovery tool, uh, which is a behavioural profiling tool and, and learning pathway. I like to try and start webinars, um, certainly my wellbeing webinars, etc., just by asking people just to check in with themselves for a moment or two and just ask themselves a question. How am I feeling today? And so what I'd like you to do is this just put a, an answer in chat for me, a number somewhere between one and six, where one is where you're feeling a little bit low today, not great, fed up, stressed, frustrated, perhaps. And six is where you're feeling really energised, mentally refreshed and up for anything, physically and mentally. So if you can just pop us some numbers in the, the chat, that would be absolutely brilliant. Great, so we've got fours and fives and sixes. Brilliant. Sophie on a three today. Two from Jana. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. One of the reasons that I like to do this is I believe that it's something that we ought to do more of. We're very good at asking other people how they are feeling. But actually, it's a question that we don't ask ourselves enough. And just two or three times throughout a day, really, it's a good opportunity just to check in with ourselves and just ask ourselves you know how's it going for us today how are we actually feeling today so thank you for sharing that so today's agenda then during the webinar the things we're going to be looking at is first of all first of all what we understand by the term work-life balance and why is having a healthy work workplace balance so important we're then going to be looking at the signs to look out for that might indicate an unhealthy work-life balance. We're going to be looking at taking action, things we can do to actually help us improve our work-life balance and have a more healthy kind of balance, switching off and unplugging ourselves from work, which many people find really quite hard to do. And then lastly, we're going to be considering, is work-life balance still actually relevant in 2021? Or is there a different way of looking at things? And we're going to be discussing um, work-life integration as a possible alternative. Just start by sharing one of my favourite quotes about work-life balance. And that is, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. And that quote's actually been attributed to Dolly Parton. But it's you know, just give you a moment to stop and reflect and think about that. So now we're going to come on and do a, a, a little poll, if I could ask you just to uh, get involved with this. We will put a link into chat so you can just copy and paste the link into your browser or you can actually do it on your, your phone as well. So how happy are you about the amount of time that you actually Apologies, that you actually devote to work. So how happy are you about the amount of time that you actually devote to work? Just log on to the pollev.com forward slash Michelle McCarr 074. The link's gone into, uh, you can just click on the link in and chat. Cool. 
couple of people have answered. It's going up slowly. Excellent. Just give you a minute or two just to do that. There we go. So we can start to see. 22% unhappy, 44% it's okay. But actually, there we go. 10% are happy, 30% very happy. But looking at that, you know, we've got 60% of people that at best it's okay with the amount of time we are currently devoting to work. So thank you for, for sharing those uh, Again, your responses. So most of us constantly are finding ourselves between that pressure of kind of work and personal life. And we're feeling ourselves pulled in kind of all sorts of directions. We need to earn a living, but we also want time with our families and friends and time for ourselves as well. And it can often feel as if there just aren't enough hours in a day or days in a week. And while we rush around trying to fit more activities into our day, it's usually the kind of, it's the quality time for ourselves, for our family, our friends, that gets squeezed out and at very best gets put at the bottom of the list. Work-life balance is used for that idea that we all need time for both work and other aspects of life, whether those are family related or personal interests and hobbies. So now what I'd just like you to do, just again, just in chat, really, is what are some of the things that are important, an important part of your life that perhaps you don't get enough time to devote to, or as much time to devote to as you would like to do? So what are some of the things that you'd like to do more of, have more time to do more of? You just want to pop a few ideas in chat. Fell walking, doing nothing at all, yep. Reading, building jigsaw puzzles, spending time with loved ones, grandchildren, yep. Crafting, spending time with family, friends, yeah. We've all got so many other things that we, we really would like to find more time, holidays, networking, family time, yeah, absolutely. Spending time with friends, quality time, brilliant. Okay, again, thank you for, for sharing your thoughts and ideas. You may recall that well-known nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill, and the saying that goes, all work and no play makes Jack and Jill dull. But it is true to say that having some kind of contributory effort, whether that's paid or voluntary, is really is recognised as being really an important part of our overall feeling of personal satisfaction and fulfilment. Those feelings of kind of self, self wealth and overall emotional well being rely on us actually feeling needed, and that we contribute that we make it some kind of contribution to life. So it's also true to say actually, that all play and no work makes Jack and Jill worse. The idea of work-life balance has been around for hundreds of years. Back in the 1800s, it was actually recognized that workers needed a day off work to do some living. That later became the two-day weekend, and it was actually Henry Ford uh, who was accredited with the introduction of the two-day weekend and the working day of nine to five. However, the, work, the phrase work-life balance is more recent in origin. And in the UK, it's thought that the term was first used in the 1970s. Work plays a significant part in all our lives. Our earnings ensure that the lights stay on, with food on our table and clothes on our back. 
But in today's fast paced and unpredictable world, it's no easy task to actually achieve work life balance. As we grow increasingly more connected through technology and social media, it's becoming more and more difficult to separate work from our personal lives. Many of us are guilty of checking emails at, at all kinds of hours, taking work home or generally working longer hours, something which has become an even bigger problem over the last 16 months or so, as many more people have been working from home. And as many more people will be working from home, for at least part of the working week in the future, then we need to kind of take some control now and start and establish a healthy balance between the hours we spend focusing upon work and the time we devote to things other than work. The cumulative effect of increased working hours is having an important effect on the lifestyle of a huge number of people which is likely to actually prove damaging in the long run to both their emotional well-being and mental health. Maintaining a, a healthy work-life balance helps people to reduce stress and prevent burnout, which we know many more people have been affected with stress and many others are on the pathway to burnout as a result of the effects of the pandemic. It also helps us to experience less physical health problems, less colds, less flu, tummy upsets, headaches, lowers our blood pressure, less asthma attacks, etc. It helps us to have increased levels of engagement and feelings of satisfaction, which leads to increased effectiveness and, and performance in the workplace. It's also easier to focus and concentrate when we need and we want to be, it's easier to be mindful and present, to be really there in the moment when you're spending that quality time with family and friends and doing hobbies, etc. And it generally helps us to feel happier and kind of more content and appreciative of the life that we have. So Signs of an unhealthy work-life balance was actually a, a survey carried out by the Mental Health Foundation, which looked at the impacts of having an unhealthy work-life balance and how it actually affects our behaviours and the way that we feel and experience life. More than 40% of employees reported neglecting other aspects of their life because of work, which then may lead to increased vulnerability to mental health issues and emotional well-being. Also, when working long hours, 27% of employees said, reported, again, feeling depressed. 34% felt more anxious. And more than half of them reported feeling irritable. The more hours that we spend at work, the more hours outside of work, you're likely to spend thinking about work or worrying about work. And as per, a person's weekly hours increase, so do their feelings of unhappiness. Again, this is based on the, the research that was carried out. 42% of women and 29% of men reported feeling unhappy, which is probably a consequence of those competing life roles and more pressure to juggle our lives. Nearly 66% of employees have experienced a negative effect on their personal life, including physical and mental health problems, poor relationships and home life. Having looked at some of the results of the research, we can start to see how many people could be leading a life that is out of balance and the effects it could be having, not only on the individual, but also on the people around them, their families, their work and ultimately the business. So let's now turn our thoughts to how we can improve our work-life balance to lead a healthy and balanced life. And as with any change, introducing new behaviours and habits can be a challenge. So following this simple process will hopefully help you to get started. The first thing we need to do is establish what is the nature and scale of the problem. How far out of balance? is 
our work-life balance. So the first thing we can start to do is try keeping a diary for a week and set out exactly how much time you spend on each activity, both at work and outside of work. This will give you that idea then of your current work-life balance. It's also useful when you're doing this at this stage to actually separate out the chores such as driving, um, taking your children to football, for example, um, from the things that you actually enjoy doing or are more fun for you to do. So separate out the chores, the housework, etc., from the things that you enjoy doing or are fun to do. Maybe you enjoy doing the housework. But once you can see how your life separates into work and other and into chores and fun, you can start to work out how to make changes to improve the balance in your life. A few years ago, I had a very busy life. I still have got a very busy life. But the lifestyle I had at that time, I was always kind of on the go, either at work or at that time, I was very heavily involved uh, with a big charity and doing lots of volunteering for the charity. And at first, for the first few years, that volunteering was really, really fun and enjoyable. It made me happy to do that. And I was very happy always being on the go and being busy. But as time went on, the charity work became more of a chore. It was starting to have a negative effect on my health and my happiness. And it was only when I actually started to keep my diary for myself that I could see exactly what was and what wasn't working for me. So a diary is a very helpful and handy kind of first step. Once we have looked at and, and if you like taken stock of where we're at now the next step in the process is actually think starting to think about how would you like your life to look what would be the ideal balance between work and home how would you actually like to be spending your time and perhaps even if we're talking about this you might be reflecting on some of these questions yourself and there's lots of tools you can use out there to help you visualize and map out your ideal day, day including there is planning and scheduling tools. I personally like to just keep it simple. And when I was doing this, what I tend to do is I just quite simply use clock faces. And I draw for each day of the week, two clock faces. And then I sit down and I divide my time up into the ideal kind of weekday sometimes you know you if you have very varied life different days different things on different days you might want to do seven clocks you might have a, a kind of just an ideal kind of weekday so you can have a weekday clock or two clocks for the weekday and two, some clocks for the weekend but just split the day up into chunks to show how you'd like to spend it how much time you'd like to spend in bed how much time doing chores and other necessary Things, you know, the housework, the food shopping, the washing, the cooking, the gardening, cleaning the car, etc. How much time working? How much time on other things? And what are these other things? What are the interests? What are the things that you enjoy? And be really specific about those other things. You know, is it that you enjoy playing with the children, practicing a mu musical instrument, or perhaps learning something new? And that discipline of having clock faces forces you to fit your activities into the time available. And you can see whether or not your ambitions are realistic. So I'd really kind of suggest that after the webinar today, you go away and draw out some clock faces or print them off uh, the internet and actually map out your ideal day. For the next step in the process, you need to look at your current situation and your ideal scenario. And then start to identify between three and five key changes that will help you to move from your past to future balance. So, for example, if you've identified that you want to stop working and checking emails outside of working hours, then what do we need to do in order to achieve that? So just thinking about that scenario, just pop me some thoughts in, in kind of chat. If you 
let's say this was your scenario, you kind of spend too much time outside of working hours, checking emails and responding to emails, etc. And you wanted to change that. What were some of the actions that you might kind of consider to support you in not working and checking your emails outside of hours? Just pop your answers in chat for me, that'd be brilliant. Shutting down laptop and closing your office door. Yeah, absolutely. Any other thoughts what you could perhaps do? If you were going to give some advice to somebody, perhaps a colleague at work, switch off reminders. Yeah. Message on email stating working hours. Very good. Yeah. Letting people know when you're available, not setting out of office. Mental discipline, not to look at your phone and your laptop, switch them off. Yeah. Don't have your work emails linked to your personal mobile. Yeah. Some really great advice there coming through. Brilliant. Only work in office hours, switch off devices out of hours. Yeah, absolutely. So you've probably got most of the things that we kind of just put out as some, a few of the suggestions there. Enter time slots in the calendar earmarked as family time. Yeah, nice one, Hans. So some of the things that we kind of just mentioned was, first of all, you tell your colleagues that you're not checking emails outside your working hours so that people fully know what to expect if they send you an email out of hours. Put an out of office notification, which you said, put your work phone and computer away. Um, if your emails come onto your smartphone, remove the account, um, get a dedicated phone if you have to do for work. Tell your family also what you're intending so that they can remind you if they catch you check, check in your emails, for example. Another situation that some people identify is that actually you've got enough time outside work, but you just feel that all the time that you do have outside work is swallowed up by chores and, and things that, you know, the boring parts of life, shall we say. So thinking there about other things that, you know, what steps we could take there. Well, you could perhaps work out whether or not you can afford to, to get a cleaner, let's say, if you seem to spend all your life cleaning, et cetera, tidying the house up. Could you actually afford a cleaner? Could you afford a gardener? Is it appropriate to ask your spouse or, or children to do more chores and perhaps agree some kind of reasonable split or rota? Could you perhaps identify one day a week, which is chore free? These are all little things that could help us um, if we wanting to kind of, yep, we're happy with our actual work life balance as such, but it's that life balance bit that we spend far too much time doing the boring, they're not enjoyable, they're not the fun things. We want to free up some time for fun. And I think that builds nicely on, on Hans's actually comment about entering time slots in the calendar, earmarked as family time. And, and it's actually been perhaps even more specific and earmarking specific things that you are going to do. So that family time doesn't get turned into chore time. It gets turned into fun time, hobby time, interest time, whatever it is that you're wanting to use and, and do more of. So some of the more general actions you might want to consider that may help you live a more healthier and kind of balanced life. Well, the first thing takes take personal responsibility for your work-life balance. And that includes speaking up when work expectations and demands are too much. Employers need to be aware of where the pressure lies in order for them to be able to address it. Try to work smart, not long. So this involves tight prioritization, allowing yourself a certain amount of time per task and trying not to get caught up in the less productive activities, such as unstructured meetings that tend to take up lots of time. Take proper breaks at work, for example, taking at least half an hour for lunch and getting out of the workplace if you can. And if you're working from home, this is just as important to do that. Try to ensure that a line is drawn between work and leisure. 
If you do need to bring work home, try to ensure that you only work in a certain area of your home and that you can perhaps even close the door on it. Take the link seriously between work-related stress and mental ill health. Try to reduce stress, for example, through exercise, relaxation, hobbies. These are all great ways. Meditation. Recognise the importance of those protective factors. We just mentioned some of them, exercise, leisure activities and friendships. Being social, going out and about are all protective factors for us. So try to ensure that these are not the, the parts of your life that get sacrificed to work in longer hours. And watch out for that cumulative effect of working long hours by just keeping track of how many hours you're actually working over a period of weeks or months rather than days. Stress and burnout has a habit of creeping up on us and sometimes we're not aware of it until we are well in the grip of stress or on that pathway to burnout. Also remember to take into account the hours that you spent worrying or thinking about work when assessing your actual work-life balance because when you're worrying about work and thinking about work, this is a legitimate part of work and it's a good indicator of work-related stress. If possible, try and assess your work-life balance with colleagues, with your line manager even. The more visible you make the process, the more likely it is to have an effect. So I now just like to draw on your experience again for a moment and pop in your answers in chat for me. Those of you who have been or are still working from home, I'd just like you to share your opinions of how you believe it's affected your work-life balance. What, if any, changes have you noticed about your work-life balance since starting to work from home? So if you could just pop some thoughts, your thoughts into chat. What have you noticed, if anything, about changes in your work-life balance since working at home or when you were working at home, if you've returned to the workplace? Yeah, good, less stress due to travel, yeah. Bad, spent more time at work. Better no travel, easiest to get on, saving commuting time, start earlier, but able to take timely breaks. Yeah. Some positives, less travel, more difficult to separate home from work. Yeah, absolutely. The reason I'm actually asking is that depending on which piece of research you read, some people argue that working from home has had a positive impact upon work life. And just as many say it's actually had a negative impact. And I think that's very much come through in your answers that you've put in there. Some people report feeling as if they have to work longer hours and have to work harder to prove themselves, even when the manager has said nothing to that effect. And even when managers are actively encouraging people to make sure that they'd look after themselves and take regular breaks and take the lunch break and not work through lunch, etc. There are an awful lot of factors to take into account and ultimately working from home will have been a very different experience for, for everyone and for some people who perhaps have had long daily commutes in the past or been packed onto trains, spent a couple of hours sitting on the motorway each day. There's possibly going to be some real kind of benefits and positive impacts on the work-life balance. Yet for others, the impact might not have been so positive. And as I say, that's very much come through in your responses uh, in chat. So again, thank you for sharing your thoughts. So a few tips here for maintaining a, a healthy work-life balance whilst working from home. Um, and one of the things, you know, it's about establishing rituals, 
habits and routines. And first of all, think about having a morning routine, just as you would do if you were going out to, to your place of work. Think about what things would you actually do in the morning before setting out for work, shower, coffee, breakfast, maybe you might do some exercise, go for a, a jog, a run, maybe do some meditation. And just because you're working from home is no excuse not to do these things. So think about how you can replace your morning commute time, perhaps with a short walk or a mindfulness practice to set yourself up for the day. Never check your emails from bed. Leave the kind of checking of work emails to your designated working time and space is a, another good thing to think about. Have a dedicated workspace or, or room. Not everyone has got the luxury of having a spare room or a dedicated office at home where it's possible, you know, but where it is possible to have some form of dedicated space, even if it's the corner of a bedroom or a corner of the living room. A home workspace should be somewhere where you only actually go there in your working hours, even if it's just a corner of the room, that corner is a dedicated space so that everyone knows if you're in that dedicated space, then you are working. Another tip on that, dress for work. It's important to make the effort and dress as if you were going into your place of work. Psychologically, we know that the way we dress affects our mindset and how we actually feel. Also, plan when you'll start work, and the time you will finish work and write those times in your diary and make sure that you turn your laptop, your PC, your phone, perhaps switch them off at that time and walk away from your workspace and then change into leisure clothes. Taking regular breaks every 90 minutes is an ideal time from a brain perspective. Um, I talk about that an awful lot in some of the, the webinars and things that I do. Our brains need a rest every 90 minutes. So stop and take that kind of break um, every 90 minutes or so. Just one or two minutes, that's all you need. Um, but it's important that we get up and have a little walk around and get a break from our PCs at the same time. You could think about preparing your lunch before you actually start work and then your lunch break, you can actually take the time to step away from your computer and to actually step away from the workspace and sit and relax and enjoy eating your lunch. Schedule some time for exercise in your daily diary and plan after work activities. Again, that goes back to, the, I think it was Hans who said about putting family time in your diary. Actually plan, just as you would plan your appointments throughout the day in your diary, plan your evening time in your diary at the same time. And have a weekly check-in with yourself. Review how well you've managed your work-life balance during the week and plan any tweaks that you may want to do to actually try and improve and enhance your work-life balance even further. So we come to the question, is work-life balance relevant in 2021? Before conclusively answering the question, we need to consider the alternative or an alternative. The alternative is work-life integration. It's a relatively new kind of approach, which requires a different mindset to the traditional work-life balance approach. Most of us know someone who responds to your emails and requests really quite quickly, and they appear to be on top of the work. And at the same time, they also appear to have a really rich and fulfilling life outside of work. So how do they do it? Well, increasingly, more people are adopting a mindset of work-life integration rather than work-life balance. Work-life balance seeks to achieve an ideal state where you work and life coexist and thrive separately. Work-life integration is about bringing work and life closer together and looking for and creating synergies between work and life. Professionals practicing work-life integrations care less about 
what's work time and what's personal time and focus instead on what's the best time to do these things. Comes back to that flexible approach to working. That could mean working later in the day in order to focus on a personal project in the morning or checking email after hours, but also checking and responding to personal emails, perhaps during the working day. In other words, work-life integration sees every activity in your day as part of a whole and is less focused on, com I can't say the word, compartmentalising where work elements and home elements compete against one another for our time. And hence it actually, when we are in that kind of work-life balance, that competition between work and life can create an awful lot of stress and anxiety in our lives, additional stress and anxiety. So work-life integration is about creating a mindset that allows us to look at the big picture and look at all those interactions and the, the synergy in, the, in those interactions of all those different compartments that we're so used to thinking about. In the broadest sense, work-life balance, work-life integration, both mean the same thing. How to have a life that has time for work, time for family, for care, for life, for joy, for play, and all the things that make life worth living outside of work. They're just two different approaches or, or mindsets. So the drivers of work-life in integration then. The way we think about work is starting to change. And again, partly through the pandemic, that kind of has speeded up. But as we see more millennials starting to rise through the professions, they look, are actually looking for a role that will support their expectations of a more holistic approach to living, as opposed to previous generations, my generation, we're used to kind of finding work and then fitting everything else around our job. Whereas the millenniums are looking, as I say, for that more holistic approach. Another driver is burnout. And it's one of the reasons why conversations has kind of shifted and organisations have started to evaluate how they can think of balance and integration and move more towards that integration. According to researchers from Harvard Business Review, they say crafting and sustaining a multifaceted identity is challenging for today's workers and their organisations. The greedy nature of our work, asking us to wear more hats, to do more, to be always on. And let's face it, everybody's role over the past few years and not just since the pandemic or during the pandemic, you know, over the past few years, we've been asking to do more, to wear more different hats. The nature of our roles has changed and we've taken on more responsibilities, etc. And looking at the future, it's predicted that, you know, in a few years time, it will be the norm to have more than one paid form of work, that we'll all have kind of different, pay, different forms of paid work. And we might be holding down two or three different kind of jobs in the future, more and more consultants consultancy style approach to work. So when we take on all that into kind of consideration and combine that with our personal lives and the social pressure to be able to focus on just one thing means we need to learn how to manage our portfolio of all these different identities, all these different hats, all these different expectations that come with us wearing all these many different hats in life. So following work-life balance best practices sometimes leaves people feeling unfulfilled or even more stressed as they're struggling to actually juggle all these competing roles. Some employees even felt added stress when they failed to achieve that balance. Given how much time they devoted to the office, to work, to meetings, to commutes and travels, to be successful at their jobs, and then not able to actually balance that out with life and feel fulfilled in life, they actually found that an added source of stress. 
So focusing on the idea of integration helps us to identify what's important and then create the life that we want by building it, integrating it with our work. But work-life integration doesn't come without any challenges. For the majority of people, work-life integration isn't quite as straightforward as just making those individual changes, particularly for people who work in organisations where they have kind of quite rigid schedules or perhaps they've got certain family obligations that they have to kind of adhere to. Work-life integration, for it to be accessible, there needs to be a shift in workplace culture and we also need to have a supportive family structure around us to support our way of living. It's not for everyone or for every behavioural preference. Some behavioural styles require a much more structured way of working. Others like the freedom and flexibility that work-life integration can bring. However, it can also mean that it provides an environment where distractions can be in abundance. And if we get it wrong, it can again lead to increased feelings of being overloaded and bogged down. So what are the actual implications for our leaders, for our organisations, if we start to think about work-life integration and kind of consider it as a possibility? Well, first, it's the reframing of the work experience. Work is no longer the villain taking people away from the things they really want to be doing, such as spending time with a family or running a marathon, for example. It changes that whole conversation from one that's largely centred around that question of how do we help people work less while achieving more? Instead, work-life integration puts work within the context of an employee's entire life experience. So as leaders, we'll need to explore questions such as, how can we create a flexible work environment that supports employees at all life stages in living their ideal lives? What do our current employees and future talent pipeline want out of life? How can we create a culture that supports that? Are we creating a healthy work culture that makes time for factors such as healthy habits, for people taking time off, for people being able to practice mindfulness, be more mindful, and other tools that people need to actually succeed? Does our technology support a realistic integration? So, for example, do our workers have mobile devices or collaboration tools? Have we got the right hardware and software available to support work-life integration? Meeting the changing needs and expectations of the workforce can be a challenge, but leaders need to embrace that idea of work-life integration will be, or leaders who do embrace the idea of work-life integration, should I say, will be actually better positioned to attract top talent, to retain top, top talent. It's about increased engagement and to develop an organisational culture that fosters long-term success. So what does work-life integration look like in, in reality? Well, here's just a few examples. It could be the team leader who introduces their, their child or their pet at the end of the Zoom call, who is actually bringing it into everybody's awareness that they're sharing the kind of the things, what their life is about, their whole life. They're showing that integration between work and life. It could be perhaps a parent sitting with a family and discussing the challenge that they're facing at work. And again, it's sharing that experience. It could mean taking advantage of a beautiful sunny afternoon, taking a long lunch break to make the most of it. I quite often, when the sun's out in an afternoon, if I don't have any appointments, any calls, or and delivering any training or anything, then I very often will go out with my dog at lunchtime and not worry about the fact that I might actually be missing from work for two or three hours. Yes, I've always got my mobile with me. If there's anything really urgent, I can be contacted. 
but I don't sit there checking it all the time. And I go off up onto the heath with the dog and we have a good old ramble around. He enjoys himself, I enjoy myself. And then I come back and I work later into the evening because that suits me and my lifestyle. It's about having that increased autonomy and responsibility for your life. It's about being open and honest, about developing empathy and understanding of each other's experiences of life. And it's that whole holistic approach to living, rather than having to try and juggle with competing elements of our lives. So, whether you prefer the mindset of work-life balance or work-life integration, we all still need to be able to switch off, to have some time to recharge and recuperate. Busy, active people often find it really quite difficult to switch off. So here's a kind of a little reminder that all things, you know, this isn't rocket science. They're all things we know we should do. But, you know, from time to time, we need, just need reminding to remember to do them. So reading, watching TV, listening to music, having some me time. You might like to practice mindfulness or meditation 10 to 20 minutes a day it can make a huge difference on how we feel each day. Some form of exercise, whether that's going to a gym, walking on the heath, running, playing the sport, is important and doing something fun and enjoyable meeting friends doing a hobby learning something new these are all really important things and finally i just want to leave you with a a thought and that thought is there is no such thing as work-life balance it's all life the balance has to be within you at that, that has brought us to the end, the formal part, the end of the formal part of the, the webinar. Just a few little notices, um, just to kind of make you aware of things. We are actually holding a virtual um, Jigsaw Discovery Showcase, where we'll be showcasing the profiling tool when you get an opportunity to play with the Jigsaw Discovery tool on the 28th of July. Um, if you want details on that, we'll actually send them out with the uh, information about the recording of the webinar. But you've been more than welcome to join us. There's no charge for that. You're more than welcome to join us. Um, and you will get an opportunity to complete your own behavioural profile. We also do one to one coaching sessions. Um, and we do have a couple of free 30 minute consultations. If anybody wants to talk anything to do with behaviours, really, um, at Jigsaw, we deal with all sorts of different kind of behavioural uh, situations, behaviours in the workplace, mental health, um, emotional well-being and, of course, work life balance. If you want to have a chat about any of those kind of things, please feel free to uh, drop me an email, my email's at the bottom there, and you can send us an email and we'll arrange a convenient time. I do know for sure the two dates that are on the screen are available if they are of any interest to anybody. And you can also find out more by visiting the jigsawdiscoverytool.com website. So has anybody got any comments, any questions before we just draw the webinar to a close? By all means, feel free to, if you want now, you can pop any questions you've got in chat um, or the questions panel, whichever. Thank you, Mary. As I say, a copy of the recording will go out in the, the next 48 hours. <laughs>